In today's frenetic world, we rarely have an opportunity to hit pause and reflect. I'm stepping out of the rush to reflect on the things that matter most, and I would love for you to join me. Take a deep breath. Welcome to the Fara Sessions. Okay, so here's one that I'm particularly excited to share with you because it's, I feel like it's really encompassing. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of the themes in, in, in most of what I try to share with Hashem's help, all rooted in the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov and, and his students, the Tzadikim. Um, and it's, 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 it's sort of representative of, of what, what, I, what I hope people take away um, from Baruch Hashem, all the shiurim and the books and, and, and so much else that um, you know, I spend my time trying to put out into the world. I'm just one tiny person, tiny little cog within a huge machine of which all of us are cogs. You know? And this is my way of, of trying to, to make sure that I am doing what Hashem sent my soul into this body for um, all the while that I, that I have this human experience for a bit. I'm um, hopefully to 120 in good health, Bez Hashem, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to maximize my, my time here as all of us are. Um, and so what I, what I hope people take away from all that is really sort of captured in this. Um, and it's, uh, th this one had a, had an official title and it's, um, it's called, it's called, um, five things I would tell my younger self. And I wrote this a couple of years ago, but it's still just as relevant. And I'm, I'm really excited to share it with you. And here we go. If I could speak to my younger self, who I could still envision sitting alone on the back steps of my yeshiva in high school, um, in a gray sweatshirt. If anybody remembers me back from then, that was like my ubiquitous, uh, um, ever-present uh, gray sweatshirt. Brokenhearted in a way very few seemed able to understand, hugging his knees and wondering endlessly, here are the five things I'd tell him. Here's number one. Beyond serving as your father and king, Hashem wants to be your best friend in the world. Sharing his oneness, which is what we do when we say Shema, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, God is one, means sharing his loneliness with a capital L. Hashem is just not just one God. Hashem is like, he's sort of lonely, so to speak. He's the, he's the, he's the only being in that category. And he created a bunch of like beings that walk around in little mini, um, it, it, you know, revelations of the Tselem Elohim, whatever that means, the divine image, to, uh, to share that experience of, of being with him. Oh, be alone with him and address him naturally as you would your best friend in your own words. Which, of course, is the idea of his Spodudos that Rabbi Nachman spoke about. I'm outside the context of the three daily standardized prayers to go out into the, into the forest, to go out into nature, um, away from all the human constructs and just to connect directly. Um, Baruch Hashem, I have a whole series now that we're in the middle of. Um, it's a woman's share that I give on Monday nights, but all the, uh, the classes are, are right here on, on this YouTube channel. Um, it's called the Yichud HaSpod to this. It's all about like understanding the dynamic and, and this element of the relationship that allows one to just walk into the presence of being. Now, it doesn't matter where you are. It's not a particular place or a particular time. Just to stop, open our, our, our inner eyes to the true self and our outer eyes to the true soul beyond all of nature and to speak to Hashem, who's present, who, who, who's yearning for a relationship with, with really you, but like not, like, like not just the outside of you, but but really the most vulnerable essence of your being. So that's like, that's number one. In that realm, Hashem is, is, is not just our, our father, which is also good, obviously, and, and he's not just our king and we're his servants, like trying to do what he wants. In that sense, Hashem is our friend. Of course, with a, you know, a capital F, Hashem is our, our best friend in the world. And there are so many verses and sources in Psukim, Laman Achai, the Rei Ai, take a look in the Mepharshim there. Hashem says, for the sake of my brothers and friends, and he's referring to Am Yisrael, we're Hashem's friends. Or the Pasuk in, in the Chumash, Utruas Melech Boy. Um, I think it's in the prophecy of Balak, of Bilam rather. Um, Utruas Melech Boy, where, where the Jewish nation has with, with, within their hearts the friendship of the king, which of course is Hashem. So that's one thing that I, I just wasn't taught. I wasn't taught, and if I was taught it, it wasn't in, a, in an actionable enough way, in, a, in an experiential enough way. And that's the first thing that I would tell my younger self, is take advantage of that. 
um, and, and, and build that relationship, foster that relationship, um, go out into nature and just speak to Hashem and tell Him everything because He knows everything already um, in the most open way, in the most honest way. Okay, that's number one. Number two, learning Gemara, which is primarily what we're learning in, in, in the Sifta and Yeshiva, at least for the boys. Um, so learning Gemara is not an end unto itself, which is a really big misconception that like, you know, it's, it's, it's just Talmud Torah and Kulam means that there's nothing else. It's the pinnacle of Judaism and spiritual experience to sit in front of a text, right? And it's, it's a misconception because it is of primary importance. Talmud Torah is Kenegad Kulam. But what that means is not that it is an end, but a primary means toward the end, meaning the ultimate purpose, which is fostering awareness of Hashem's presence in every detail of your life, achieving an expanded consciousness of spiritual maturity and revealing His presence in the physical realm through the learning of the Torah and then the, act, the, the application of what we learned, which is what Chazal themselves say, God Allah, lima shemevi lidei maisa. That, that learning is, is, is the most important. Why? Because learning is what brings us to do, right? And, and that's the purpose. The, the ultimate purpose is to be a human, not to, not to sit in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, you know, in, in, in a library, so to speak, and you know, surrounded by books. The, the purpose of the learning is to then do it, to then do it. And that's the main thing the Gemara says, a person who has a lot of learning, but, but, but doesn't, doesn't, you know, it hasn't impacted the place where the person's really bringing it into being. So it's, that's not ideal. Let's use nicer, more sensitive terms. Not ideal. And so this is really, really important. Um, that, that learning is of crucial importance, but as a means towards something much bigger. And it's got to make us more expansive. It's got to make us more sensitive, more deep, less judgmental, more Hashem conscious, living with more emuna, you know, and, and, and yishava das, not more anxiety um, and, and stress and, and, and everything that so much oftentimes comes along um, with, 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 with a culture that's founded um, on, on, on Talmud Torah as, uh, as as defined that, um, that Gemara is an end as opposed to a means to, you know, in, in a much broader framework. Um, irrelevant, boring, or convoluted as it may often seem, which, it, of course, it, that's a universal experience that so many teenagers have, Gemara study is crucial. It is crucial for a few deeply spiritual reasons we can discuss another time. And, th and, th and that's really important. Um, and anybody who's interested in doing a bit further study, take a look in the Tanya, Parag Dalit, and Hay, and other places as well, where he discusses like why it is that learning is so crucial. That Rizal walks us through like wh what, what it is about learning Talmud Bavli that's so crucial um, to the experience of being a Jew, etc. And, and there's so much depth there that also was just not, not given over. At least it wasn't given over to me. And I wasn't aware of it until much later on after a lot of pain that I experienced that could have been avoided. Um, if, if, uh, if, you know, I, I, I had been educated in a, in a bit broader and deeper of, of a way, which Baruch Hashem is happening more and more, Chaz De Hashem, it's, it's nobody's fault, it's just the way that, that things were. But, um, and so, so learning Gemara is crucial, but Torah is infinitely broader than the six to eight Masechtos, which modern day yeshivos uh, traditionally study. There's much more to Torah than, than just that. Um, as well as the ways in which those very mesechtos are traditionally learned. So, like, there, first of all, Torah itself is, is so much broader, and not everyone will connect to every aspect of it, although it's important for us to have, a, like, a healthy diet. Um, but, but Torah is so broad, and even the learning of Gemara itself, there are so many different ways of learning Gemara. And, you know, sort of the, the quote-unquote, like we like to say, the system, whatever this means, but the institutions are, are, are focusing on a hyper-specific um, quantitative element of Torah and then engaging with that hyper-specific element of Torah study in a hyper-specific uh, qualitative way, right? you know, like a very, very specific kind of, 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 of engagement. And, so, and so, so, so that's what I'm writing here. Torah is infinitely broader than the six to eight mesechtos, which modern-day yeshivas traditionally study, as well as the ways in which those very mesechtos are traditionally learned. 
sample, and this is what I would tell my younger self and what I tell anybody who's in that position, whether you're of that age or any age, um, but a person for whom these messages uh, resonate, which is like my only audience. I'm not, I don't think these messages are, are for everybody, but I think there's a substantial amount of Jews who are feeling the thirst that I felt um, and feel, who are feeling the void that I, that I, that I felt. Um, and, and to a lesser degree, but that I, that I still feel, and that's why I'm still on this journey, and that's who I'm just trying to, trying to journey with. So if it resonates for you. Um, so, so what I would tell myself and what I would tell all of you um, is sample the gamut of topics, areas, levels, approaches, and generations throughout history of all the different teachers and teachings to identify your personal headquarters, which I, I don't think will come as a shock to anybody that my headquarters is in Breslov. You know, that, that's the base measures that I most identify with. Um, and, and, and also of Cook and, and, and many, many others. So find your headquarters and then work toward a synthesis, a healthy balance of the entire gamut. All with the realization that absorbing Hashem's mind, with a capital M, within ours, Hashem's will, merging with, with our own, accomplished by every kind of Torah study, as the Nefesh Chaim makes absolutely clear in Shardalid, right, that it's all, the whole Torah is homogeneously holy and it's universally saturated with the presence of, 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 of Hashem. So engaging with the entire gamut with the realization that absorbing Hashem's mind within ours, Hashem's will within ours, accomplished again by every kind of Torah study, affords the deepest possible intimacy with Him. It's a means toward a broader end. And I wish someone had made that clear to me when I was 16, 17, 18, 19 years old. Okay, here we take a look at, um, at number three. Mitzvos, 613 commandments in the Torah with all the myriad um, related Mishnayis and the Gemara expounding on all those Mishnayis and 60 however many Mesechtas and the millions, possibly, I would say, millions of Halachos and Halachai Halachos that are branched out in terms of teaching us how to engage with that with that experience. Mitzvos are not merely commandments, as we just translated them, because that's the generally, you know, the ordinary translation, commandments. But we should read not mitzvos commandments, but mitzvos as opportunities for connection. Because the word tzavsa in Aramaic, like the word sevet, right, in the army is a platoon, it's a group of soldiers, a group, a gathering together. Um, a, a, uh, a, so the word savsa in Aramaic means connection. And that's how we can see the word mitzvah and, and all of what that connotes. It's not like something that I'm commanded to do and I must do or else I'm going to Gehenna, you know, I'm going to hell. Um, but rather it's an opportunity for connection to the deeper realm um, of the human experience, which is, which is Hashem's presence. So mitzvahs are not merely commandments, but opportunities for connection. Hashem is not a slave driver who demands that we do his restrictive bidding or else. He is our loving Father whose sole desire is to help us achieve our own sole desire, like every good father. That which is objectively best for us, our true identity, the spark of godliness within. Studying the spiritual depth of each mitzvah, and that's the realm of Pneumius HaTorah with all of the mystical depth and all of the meaning and, 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 and every, every like framework necessary to be able to see and understand every detail of every mitzvah in its, in its broadest, broadest, broadest setting. So engaging in that kind of Torah study can help you to appreciate the nuance of these unique opportunities, making it so much easier to appreciate and soon enjoy, relish, and delight in their fulfillment. It is true. A kid who is totally disengaged from Shabbos, disengaged from tefillin, disengaged from chagin, disengaged from learning, disengaged, can literally, in a, in, a, in a very short period of time, find that it wasn't actually that he was repelled by, by Shabbos or by the chagim or by the mitzvot or by Judaism. It's just that the way that all those things were presented were completely unrelatable, unattractive, and not deep enough for what their soul and the younger generation is having progressively, progressively deeper, deeper souls, what, what that was affording them. And so it's not that we're run, they're running away from Shabbos or that I was running away from Shabbos. I just never met what Shabbos really ought to be. 
And so, yeah, you can come to relish it and delight in their fulfillment. In the same vein, tefillah is not about asking for stuff. As if Hashem is some sort of divine vending machine. You know, put in a couple of quarters or pounds or whatever it is, and out comes the snack, you know, that you chose A4, you know, on these old uh, vending machines. That's not the thing. That's just not the thing. Tefillah is rather an opportunity to pause, to reflect, to recenter, to reaffirm our reliance and recognition of Hashem. In this sense, regardless of whether the answer to our requests is yes or no, it is always yes, because the prayer is itself the resolution. Meaning there's already something that's gained, not in terms of asking for something and then wondering, you know, will it be fulfilled or not? There's already a gift in the very experience of prayer itself. We move on to number four, also super duper crucial. I want a privilege it is to be able to share this with you here in this way. Your negative passions and desires are holy energies in disguise. It's not an epic battle between good and evil and the Yitzhah Tov and the Yitzhah Hara and the Sat on it. No. It's all holy and it's just being mischanneled and misinterpreted. They are not to be squashed, these desires castigated or banished, but appreciated, channeled, and elevated to holy pursuits. We live in an olam hafuch, that's the words of the Gemara. We live in an upside down world. Oftentimes, the kids we refer to as rebels are truly the most devoted conformists. It's just that instead of mindlessly conforming to a system of whatever kind, they are conforming to the authenticity of their own neshamas, of their own souls. With all of the uncertainty and confusion this journey naturally entails, I would tell myself that your stormy soul holds a hurricane of holiness and your tears are the life-giving rains that will sustain the seeds of your search. A relationship with God is not something you need to attain from without. You don't need to change. Like maybe one day I'll be holy. One day I'll be elevated. One, it, it's nothing like that. Um, but something you are able to reveal from within. You're searching, you're seeking, you're yearning, you're struggling, your ups, your downs on this roller coaster of spiritual striving is the most precious thing in Hashem's eyes. He is with you, embracing, comforting, and beckoning every step of the way. Oh, how I wish someone would have told me that and made that clear to me. And number five, your Jewishness is not simply a cultural fact or a technical label. Just as Avodah Hashem is not confined, as we discussed, to overtly spiritual places or pursuits. Your Jewishness and the mission it implies is the very essence of who you are. And Hashem is therefore hiding in every arena of the human experience, not just in the base Medrash, not just in the base Knesset, not just in holy moments and Yom Kippur, but in every split second of our lives. Waiting for us to find Him there, to recognize His presence, to do whatever we can to amplify it. In addition to Torah, Tefillah, and Chesed, because there's not just one way to Hashem, you can connect to Hashem through your normal teenage interests and, um, and emotional states. Hang out with your friends, play ball, work out, argue about politics, make music, um, eat too many potato chips, do everything that normal teenagers do. But do it with the recognition that every single aspect of the human experience is potentially an encounter with the divine. And um, I think putting all of these five things together, even though they're like sort of separate ideas in a way, um, but, they're, but, they're, but they're really interlocking chains that sort of create a, a total, an all that's greater than the sum of the parts. It's a spirit. It's, it's a completely different approach to what Judaism is. And it's not like heterodox. Like it's not something other than just our Misora. It's, it's not, uh, not other than anything that has always been passed on from generation to generation throughout our history. But it's, it's just something that we've lost. It's something that we've lost. And it's something that the younger generation is desperate to reclaim, just like I was. And that was the source of my dissatisfaction. I wasn't rejecting Yiddishkeit. I was just rejecting what it had sort of become. And Baruch Hashem, now the movement that, um, you know, 10 years ago, who could have believed 
that things would be where they are in terms of this language being spoken and Pnimi Torah being taught and, and the schools, you know, bringing in the thank you Hashem and, 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 and consciousness of, 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 of the relational aspect and Hashem is our loving Father and, and all this, like it's exploded in the last 10 years and it's phenomenal. Um, and that process will continue, but it's, 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 it's like sometimes I feel that it's, it's not enough. And the inner teenager inside of me is compelling me, do more, do more to spread this message, to reach people. They just don't understand that, that you know, there, there's, there's another way. There's another way without changing anything quantitatively. It's the same Yiddishkeit without changing a thing. But by re-examining some of our um, like basic lenses and perspectives, just seeing things in a different light means seeing things differently. And considering them... In a, in, a, in a whole different way. And I, and, I, and I really think that the opportunity here is so deep and so vast and it's so optimistic because it's so easy to do. But we have to be humble and we have to open our hearts to the revelation that Hashem was sending down into the heart of the Baal Shem Tov and into the heart of Rabbi Nachman and, and in a certain way into the heart of the, of, of, of the Vilna Gon and, 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 Rav Nef, and, and Rav Chaim of Elijah in, in their own way of embracing the more mystical conceptions um, of, of Judaism to mainstream it, see it as the core of our tradition and not teaching Kabbalah to, you know, to every fifth grader, of course. Sixth grade maybe, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, not, not, to every, not to every kid, but it does mean to draw on that um, mystical tradition so that its light can saturate the entire um, spectrum of, of, of our engagement with Avodah Hashem and more broadly with, with all of life, which seen through the lens of Panimis is Avodah Hashem, is life, is Avodah Hashem, is being human, um, is, is what it means to be alive in the first place. Um, so I hope that there's value there. Um, for you, if you'd like to hear more about any of these ideas, this is really uh, the foundation of all the classes that I give. So all the shiurim that are here on YouTube, um, I have sh many shiurim on Spotify, I'm on SoundCloud, Podbean, really on, on many platforms. Um, they sit at the, at, the, at the core of the books that Be'ezus Hashem have been zocha meriting uh, to put out, Sparks from Redditch of Sunlight of Redemption, The Story of Our Lives, From My Heart to Yours, um, which volume one is hopefully by the time this video gets out has been out already volume two is coming soon that's that's the message and together if we can really start to shift in this direction and join forces as spiritual seekers that know somewhere deep down that something's got to give something's got to change something's got to evolve we can change the world we can activate every jewish soul particularly the youth and together we can figure out what our mission is as a Jewish nation vis-a-vis -vis all the nations of the world. And we can do what we were always uh, intended to do, which is to be an Ur Goyim, which is to be a light unto the nations, which is to reveal the way in which um, the presence of Hashem sat saturates every aspect of the human experience. To rectify the world, that it should be a kingdom of, of, of spirit a kingdom of soul, a kingdom of authenticity, of honesty, of depth and sensitivity and love. We can, we can get there. We can do it together. So I hope that you'll join me, continue to join me on this journey. We need each other and there's so much work to do. So what a privilege to be just a small, tiny part of it as each of us are. Thanks for listening.